Hello and welcome to Infinity. It can be very useful to have yourself a library of clouds when you can take any of the pictures in the same way that you might have, have a collection of skies. Sometimes it's useful to have cloud to be able to put in and to, you know, to, to be able to help with the composition of a picture. And as it turns out, it's not very easy. In fact, I found it almost impossible to select a cloud very accurately within Affinity Photo with the tools that you have. And the best you can do is try and photograph the, you know, select the sky in your photograph. But fortunately, I wrote a macro a little while ago, which works reasonably well. And that's under Dave's saturation selection. And if you look in the resources down below and look for the, say, the resource page, and you'll see there one of the macros you can download is the saturation selection there. So if we open that, and the one we want is the monochrome selection. So I click on that and it produces a copy of the layer underneath. We need to turn the layer underneath off so we can just see this. And then the select monochrome there, double click that, and that brings up a procedural texture macro. So what we want to do is it already, because it's in a default sort of starting position, it's got a bit of it selected. But I just want to turn this up. You can see it's selecting the, the cloud there quite well. It eventually starts getting into the blue because the further up you go, the more into colour it sort of encroaches. You can fine tune it with the fine brush and feathering will increase how, the edge, how soft that edge is there. And if we go in a bit uh, closer to this, you can see it's, the transparency there is pretty good around the edges, so it'll help blend in. But you can use the, here the this is the calculation the mac, the algorithm for feathering. So try that one. That's the exponential one. And that one actually that one I think is a bit better. I could like that. That's the cosine one. And if I look here also, this is how the monochrome is calculated. So I'll try one. That disappears. Two. Uh, not so much three not so much there but i'm actually going to try the one because this is based on a gray algorithm but to do that i need to pull up this to make it a bit better and actually that's not too bad there i quite like that so i'll use that control zero so yes see around there it selected that quite well so i'll just go with that what i can do with this as well is I want to get rid of the the, the colour in this so that I can match it into whatever picture I drop it in. So that's simply a matter of just desaturating it. Make sure this is inside there. There we go. And just turn the saturation down. There we go. So there we've got a close. So we just want to take this one out here. So I'm just going to flatten the document altogether. So it's just one layer there and I'm going to crop that cloud out there and then use the erase brush to take out the bits I don't want. So this is good to go around just to pick out any sort of odd areas where there might be just a little bit you don't want. Anyway, there you go, there's a nice cloud. So I'm now going to export that. File export. Export as a PNG so it keeps the transparency into something. I've got a cloud there, so I'll call this one cloud two. Okay. Well, what I'll do is I'm going to drop it back into the original picture here so we can compare it to see whether I can make it match. And I've got a comparison there. So if I go File, Place, and Cloud 2, and I just drag to make it about the right size. If I bring it down here, you can see because it's black and white as opposed to colour matched in here, this is, it looks out of place. You could use things like a recolour with it, but a trick you can do with this 
is if you go up here, get the little pipette there and go into the middle of the sky and get that colour there. And then go to HSL here and click on the circle there and let's drop the colour into this. And now all we're going to do is turn down the saturation. There, and you can see there, you can match it in pretty almost immediately, so close that is to that one there. And there you go, you've got your cloud to put in, which you can do things like you can reverse it and change the shape of it and drop it on other things and so on. So there you go, very easy, how to select a cloud and then put it into a just a folder for as a um, kind of library and you can call them back later on. That's it and thank you very much for watching.